Hangyong Concentration Camp was a prison camp in North Korea that was reportedly closed in 2012. The official name was Camp Number 22. The camp was a maximum security area completely isolated from the outside world. Camp 22 was located in the Harong County, North Hamyong Province, northeastern North Korea, near the border with China. It was a large valley with many side valleys surrounded by mountains 400 to 700 meters high. The camp was established around 1965 in Hangyong-ri and was expanded to Cheongbong-ri and Sokron-ri in the 1980s and 90s because of the sharply increase of prisoners and the shutdown of many camps. The conditions of the camp were described as harsh and life-threatening. A former guard recalled being shocked at the conditions of the prisoners themselves, saying they looked like they were walking skeletons, dwarves, and ragged cripples. It was estimated that about 30% of prisoners had deformities such as ears that had been torn off, gouged in eyes, deformed noses, and faces covered with laceration and bruises as a result of many beatings and other types of mistreatment. It was also estimated that roughly 2,000 prisoners had limbs that were missing, but these prisoners were still forced to work. Prisoners only received about two meals per day, which consisted of 180 grams of corn and were not provided with any significant source of protein such as meat and vegetables. In order to get meat, they had to resort to eating rats, snakes, and frogs. They even went as far as to eat insects. The prominent malnutrition led to the deaths of 1,500 to 2,000 people each year, with the most being children. Despite this, the population of the camp stayed consistent due to the new inmates arriving each year. The education system was very basic. Children that were above the age of six were assigned to work which included peeling corn or drying rice, but in return they received very little food, with the total being 360 grams in all per day. Many of the children died very quickly from the lack of food estimated that most were dying before the age of 10. The elderly were given the same work as adults, and if they became ill, they were left untreated to die. The housing conditions were also very poor, with 100 people being assigned to one room. But occasionally, as an incentive for hard work, families might have been given permission to live together in a single room of a small house that lacked the use of running water. Houses were described as being made from mud and were in overall poor condition. The toilets were also described as being dirty and were often overcrowded. The prisoners' work schedules was from the early hours of 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. and the types of work included mining and doing work inside factories. This was followed by re-education courses. The only holiday that was received was New Year's Day. The work conditions were also horrid and not up to the normal standard that we see today. There were no safety measures taken and resulted in the death of many inmates per day. The prisoners were restricted to using only tools such as shovels and pickaxes and they were pushed beyond exhaustion. In the instance that a fire were to start or the tunnel were to collapse that they were working in, prisoners were abandoned and left to die. Corpses were loaded into the back of the trucks and brought to melting furnaces to be burned. Human rights violations were very prominent in Camp 22, and guards were often taught to treat prisoners as if they were enemies and slaves. They were also reminded that the prisoners were not human beings and must be treated as such. The guards were ruthless and would kill prisoners for the most insignificant reasons, such as violating the rules of the camp. A former guard admitted to ordering the execution of five families consisting of 31 people only because one family member tried to escape. Executions were done publicly in the 1980s and would happen as often as once per week. This was changed in the 1990s, however, and executions were moved to a more private setting outside of fear that riots may break out and the security guards might be harmed. One of the guards reported seeing crushed bodies at the execution site. If a prisoner committed a more severe violation of camp rules, an investigation would be launched, and in return meal sizes would be reduced, as well as a beating and various forms of sexual harassment and torture. The torture methods that were observed consisted of the following. Water torture, in which the prisoner was forced to stand on their toes in a tank of water that was filled up to their nose for 24 hours. Hanging torture, in which the prisoner was stripped naked and were hung upside down while they were being beaten by a group of guards. Kneel torture, where the prisoner must kneel while a wooden bar was placed near the hollow points in her knees, which would result in a stop of blood circulation which would later result in the prisoner not being able to walk and dying within a few months. And pigeon torture, in which the prisoner would often be tied to a wall and were forced to crouch for hours on end. 
The prisoners were often beaten every day for minuscule reasons such as not bowing quickly enough in front of the guards. They were also beaten if they did not work hard enough or failed to obey orders quickly enough. The camp guards would often use prisoners for martial arts training and sexual violence was quite common in the camp. Females were killed if they resisted the orders of the guards. If prisoners were working on projects such as military bases or secret tunnels, they'd be killed after construction it would be very rare for these types of prisoners to be allowed to return to camp. Human experiments were also reported to take place at Camp 22, one of which consisted of a sealed glass chamber in which a family of children was placed inside and were later killed by gas. It was also reported that medical officers of hospitals would carry out surgery practices on inmates. This included unnecessary operations which resulted in killing them or crippling inmates. Detention centers in some of the guard towers were witnessed being demolished via the Cytolat images in 2012. A shocking number of 27,000 inmates died to the starvation with a very small period of time, and the surviving inmates, which consisted of 3,000 people, were transported to Haosing concentration camp in early 2012. In later 2012, it was reported that the camp had shut down and any further evidence that it existed was erased. It was believed that the officials decided to close the camp and cover their tracks after a warden revealed what was going on there.